Hello and welcome to this Edexcel Further Math Statistics 1 video looking at use of errors, size and power and also looking at the power function. A reminder that the probability of a type 1 error is alpha, the size or significance level of a test and is the probability of incorrectly rejecting the null hypothesis when the null hypothesis is actually true. The probability of a type 2 error denoted beta is the probability of incorrectly accepting a false null hypothesis. And the power of a test is 1 minus beta, which is the probability of correctly rejecting a false null hypothesis. You may wish to pause the video at this point just to read through this example again. It's an example where the scenario was looked at and part A was done uh, as part of the previous video, but we're now extending this into looking at power and power function. So first of all, we need the power of this test when P in in reality equals 0 0.075, not 0 0.05. So we require the probability that the number of faulty components x is less than or equal to 4 when p is 0 0.075. That could be obtained directly from a calculator and then the power of the test when p is 0 0.075 obtained by subtracting from 1. And the last part of this test asks us to find different values for the power of the test at different values for P, the probability of faulty items being produced. And so exactly the same evaluation needs to happen in terms of the fact that we require X to be less or equal to 4, but for these different values of P. And once those are found, they're subtracted from 1 so that we can work out the power of the test for different values of P. You may wish to pause again for a moment here and just read through this next simple example where we're going to find the critical region and then look at power. So first of all, looking for the critical region that we have um, done before. This test is a two-tailed test because P not equal to 0 0.5 is our alternative. So we are required to find the extreme values for the number of heads that are obtained so that the probability of getting that value or something more extreme is 0 0.025 or less. And for the lower tail, this can be done very simply on the class whiz or the CG Casio calculators, just working out the probability of the lower end until we can identify which value gives us a probability of below 0.025 uh, when if we go a value up, we exceed that. So here we've worked out our lower critical region. For the upper critical region, if you have a more advanced calculator, you can actually evaluate this directly. I have gone to the opposite. You need to work out where the probability of getting below a particular value is 0.975 or greater. And the first value that that occurs at is 14. So our critical region must start uh, at 15. And you could do this by plotting on GeoGebra as well as if you like. And we can find the critical region as 0 to 5, the lower end here, or 15 to 20 at the top end. So for part B, we need to find the power of the test when P is 0 0.65. So we need to find the probability we accept the test, so X lies outside the critical region, when P is 0 
and doing that directly from the calculator we get 0.7543 subtract from 1 and we can obtain the power of the test. So we're now asked to consider two ways in which the power can be increased and generally that will either be by increasing the sample size so throwing the coin more than 20 times or we could look at increasing the significance level for the test. This question, and again I suggest you pause and read it through and make notes on it, is looking at finding a power function, so an algebraic expression for power. We just consider the power function as 1 minus the probability of making a type 2 error. We are going to be interested in uh, the probability of accepting the null hypothesis when the null hypothesis is false. So we need to introduce another parameter where P is the actual true proportion of underweight bags and if we're going to accept the null hypothesis we want the number of underweight bags to be less than or equal to 2 when P takes a particular value and if we just use the binomial probability expression for obtaining 0, 1 and 2 hopefully you can see that this is the algebraic expression for the probability of getting a type 2 error and we subtract that from 1 in order to obtain the power of the test. And this is quite unusual because this is an algebraic expression which means we can evaluate the power for this test for any value of P, the proportion of underfilled bags. And power functions can be used uh, to compare different hypothesis tests with perhaps different suggested significance levels or different sample sizes and they can be plotted on the same axes so the more powerful test in a particular circumstance could be identified. And this is just a simple example of plotting the power function that we found for Lin's test and you can see that we can read off that if we think the power of a test, perhaps we want it to be 0.8, uh, then we're probably looking at the test being sufficiently powerful once the proportion of underweight or underfilled bags is above about 0.375. Uh, this could be very useful in quality control within manufacturing uh, in a factory situation. And that concludes this section.